Lightning in a bottle. That's the phrase we use to talk about the challenge of capturing something so elusive it illuminates the earth for a fraction of a second. Is it any harder to capture lightning in a camera? It might be easier than you think to decorate your photographs with these stunning weather phenomena. After all, modern technology allows us a pretty accurate advance notice when nature is cooking up a stunning photo op. What's up, it's Matt, and we've got an awesome opportunity tonight to get out and do one of my favorite things, which is incorporate lightning and thunderstorms into a landscape photograph. So if you photograph around the Midwest like I do, then you know there's not really a regular thunderstorm season here. And I really feel like I need to seize these opportunities when they come along. A thunderstorm can come out of nowhere. It usually only lasts for a little while, and you may not get another one for months. So these make for very impressive photographs, but they're actually not that hard to take. I thought I'd bring you guys along, make a video, tell you everything I know, make up the rest. Come on. Come on. Before we get out and get wild with our camera, I thought I'd quickly go over some of the equipment that I'm going to use in the video today. Uh, the first you won't see me use, but I think it's a good recommendation, is this tripod mount for a cell phone. It's a universal fit. Uh, I think I got it for $5 at a chain store that I won't name. Your phone mounts in it like that. It goes right on the tripod. This will let you take lightning pictures with a special app for long exposures or using the movie mode and taking screenshots uh, to get lightning without even having to use any kind of camera at all. Second recommendation that I actually will be using today is a lens wipe. Nothing more disappointing than thinking you've got a great awesome lightning picture coming home and finding out that you had raindrops all around the front of your lens. Today we will be taking pictures with a digital SLR. This is outfitted with a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. I'll be using it all the way out at 16 millimeters to make sure that if there's any lightning on the periphery of the frame, we have the best chance possible of capturing it. We'll be shooting in the bulb mode, which is the B on your camera's mode dial selector switch. Shooting in bulb mode is like shooting in manual. You can set the aperture and the ISO. The shutter speed is determined by how long you physically press the shutter button. So whenever you push the shutter, the um, shutter opens and then it doesn't close again until you release the shutter. Uh, it won't be very desirable for us today to physically hold down the shutter button while we're waiting for lightning to strike because we'll shake around the camera. So another critical piece of equipment we'll need is this shutter release cable. How this works is it's just a button. Whenever you push the button, that stands in for the physical shutter button on the camera. When you release it, that releases. And another feature that you'll usually find in most shutter release cables is that there's a lock to lock the shutter open. And then when you want to shut the shutter again, you just unlock the button. And that way we can completely control the shutter actuation without ever having to touch the camera and disturb it. it plugs into a port on the camera right here. If you are going to go out and get a shutter release, I think this costs around $8 on Amazon. So it's very affordable. And make sure you get the one that goes in the particular port in your camera. Last thing we absolutely are going to have to have is a tripod. If you get a chance to get one at your local camera store, be sure to support those guys. Uh, my local camera store is three hours away, so I don't get to go there too often. Now with the camera locked down on the tripod in bulb mode, all I have to do is set my exposure to expose for the lightning, lock the shutter open, wait for the lightning to come and expose the scene, unlock the shutter. It's okay for the shutter to stay open all the rest of the time because it's so dark out today that there's no risk of overexposing the scene by ambient reflected light. Now I just have to pack all this stuff into this camera bag. Get dressed for the weather. Let's go! Let's go. Let's go. Aside from using bulb mode, there are two other good techniques worth mentioning to capture lightning. So the first method that, to guarantee you get lightning in your picture is to use a special device you can buy that sits in the hot shoe of your camera and triggers the camera to release the shutter as soon as it senses the change in light from lightning. They kind of take a little bit of the fun out of it. So I'm not gonna do that today. Second method to use neutral density filters to uh, draw out your exposure time so that you can keep your sensor exposing for 15 to 30 seconds 
and then just leave the shutter continually rolling. But today we've got the easiest uh, method of all available to us, but you can only do it when it's completely dark outside. When the lightning strikes, the lightning will expose the image. After some driving in the country, I pulled over in a quiet little spot I found where I could set up my camera and watch the storm roll over. A lot of times when you're out in nature shooting photographs, it's just kind of a waiting game. And this is similar to that, but there aren't as many dull moments here because there's always something happening with this storm. And I feel like if I just leave the camera roll here, even just talking to you, we'll see lightning going off. You might've just noticed a big flash there. You're all right, man. Yep, have a good one. I had to disappoint this inquisitive trooper by being found not doing crimes in my car. After he drove his really bright vehicle away, I was able to start taking some pictures. And it wasn't long before I had some luck. The camera's set up at 16 millimeters for the widest field of view. And right now, I'm making an exposure. Yeah, the camera's on a tripod sitting uh, on my floorboard. Oh, there's one. Let's see if we got anything. So I'll just let off the shutter release. The camera will stop exposing. The play button and review back to the image. Yeah, look at that. These straight out of the camera JPEG images are some examples of the lightning I was able to capture by simply letting the camera work while I kicked back and enjoyed the storm. I edited this last image by cropping out the car window, removing some of the rain spots, and raising the shadow level to make the foreground a little more visible. These are basic edits you could do on any smartphone. The result of this modicum of work? A stunning capture of one of nature's finest productions that I was very proud to share on Instagram the next day. Uh, I'm back from a very late and exhausting but totally worthwhile night chasing this thunderstorm around. I tell you, there's very little more rewarding than capturing a finite moment of a place that will probably never exist that way again. And I think that's a very important part of the storytelling aspect of what we do with photography. I sometimes wonder if the reason I don't see more pictures like this come across my social media feed is if maybe people don't realize how easy it can be to take them. Uh, so hopefully there's something that you've gleaned from this video that can help inform your creative photographic process because I'd love to see more pictures like this. If you want to see more tip videos, I've started dumping the older ones on a YouTube channel called Flyover Photography. There's a good conversation there about creative photo opportunities that exist for people that don't live in conventional landscape environments. Maybe specifically if you don't live in a conventional landscape environment. But first, these videos go to Instagram TV, so be sure to follow me on Instagram. My feed is chock full of inspiring images from right here in the heartland. As always, there is a link in my profile to my print shop, so please go check that out as well. I'll see you guys later. Thanks.